first tell you what I do for a living, as it will bring some understanding to my situation. I run my own business, if you could call it that. I've thought of it more as a personal service. I break into the home or building of a client's choice, destroy or steal whatever they want, provide proof of the action, and then I get paid. Quite substantially, if I might add. My clients usually take the form of middle class men, angered at their bosses, or recently dumped individual who wants revenge on their ex. Essentially, I do the work that one has the anger and desire to do, but doesn't have the actual nerve to do it themselves. It, I, it paid well and gave me some interesting places to explore, so I've been quite content with the job. About a few weeks ago, I received a usual call for what I expected to be a usual job. The caller requested for me to break in into an abandoned home not too far away from my area. He requested me to retrieve a few recordings of sort, VHS tapes, cassettes, DVDs. They didn't matter. All he cared about was any that looked interesting, as he described. Despite the fact that information is important in my work, he didn't tell me anything that would be useful for the search. He wouldn't even tell me anything about himself, which almost made me turn down the job until he offered me an unusually large pay. And when the caller had mentioned the abandoned home, I had expected the location to be shed away from the local population and generally safe to break into during the day. To my frustrated surprise, the place was in the middle of the damn street, right along with other, a string of other apartments and surrounding buildings, most of which were populated and people on the sidewalk strolled past it and not acknowledging its uh, direct state, sometimes being taken aback by its uh, desolate state. I came at back after dark, and it was just as how I wanted it to be. No pedestrians anywhere, and there were no lights on the surrounding structures. It appeared to be an easy target. The home stood two stories, and with a small attic at the highest point. I didn't look like the most enjoyable place to live, but even before it aged, the best word I can think of it to describe it is, the living quality would probably be confined. It appeared to have only a single window, which was on the attic floor. The front door, which I believe to be the only entrance, had an unnecessary amount of locks on it, all of which were now rusted away. It opened with a mere tap of my foot. I probably should stay here that I didn't even have nectophobia or anything of the sort. I enjoyed complete dark, abandoned buildings such as the next wandering man by my first step into the house. I wanted the job done fast. What I'm saying is that I'm not paying attention to specific details at the time of both the home and what might have been there. And when I turned on my flashlight, the first room appeared entirely vacant of anything, as if it had been completely cleared after the departure of its residence. This was both good and bad in my situation. This meant the room was free of obstacles, but it also meant that I would need to search more of the home, which I wasn't excited to. There were other homes around, but I would be fine if I at least kept the noise to a decent level. The place hardly had windows, after all. I had gone up the stairs to find a similar area, an empty room, and nothing that I was looking for. This meant further worse news. I would have to check the attic. Though I said, well, I wasn't severely frightened by the dark, I wouldn't be lying if I said I didn't have a discomfort with tight spaces. The attic was uh, accessed by a standard pull-down stairway on the ceiling of the second story room. It took a couple of jerks to budge, but it came down without much resistance. A large cloud of dust covered my view for a second, which made me realize how old the place really was. Each step of the stairway creaked tremendously to where it became more irritating than unnerving. The last step brought me inside the attic, which showed the only window in the house. A bit of moonlight shined through the small room, 
which helped me ease my tension by an insignificant amount. Scanning the room, I finally caught eye of a few boxes in the corner. Three aged cardboard boxes, all packed with a number of old VHS tapes. No DVDs, though. The place was so old that I didn't expect to find any. I was still in a rush to get out of there, so I didn't take much time looking through. I didn't even pick out a few, I just grabbed the heaviest box and dragged it to the ladder. I didn't realize exactly how much was in the box until I had dropped it to the floor, it, which it made a rather loud crash that seemed impossible for its size. Some of the tapes were probably broken in this process, but I didn't stop to check. I just wanted to be out of there. I arrived at the top of the stairs and I observed something else. The house had another level, which I could, would assume would be the basement. There was another stairway leading downwards that could only be seen if one was actually looking down the stairs at the second level. At the bottom of the stairway was another faint but noticeable red dot. I was carrying a heavy box of tape so I didn't have a hand to shine my flashlight on it or the previous one. Then I tripped. There's no other way of saying it. I tripped and tumbled the entire fucking stairway all the way down the first floor. I should have broken a leg or my back in the process, but the box of tapes actually managed to break my fall in some miraculous way. The VHS tapes scattered across the bottom of the stairs. And I didn't take the time to retrieve them all. I picked up the three tapes that were closest to me. My body hurt like hell, but it was more focused on the fact that I had just made a noise similar to a damn police raid. Made it back to my car, then to my home, without issue. Woke up the next morning with aches all over, but I hadn't been caught, which was what I had cared about. I called the client numerous times, and just as I predicted, he never answered. The number he gave me didn't even have an answering machine, as if it had been disconnected. I was quite sure this client was going to be a no-show, which made me grow quite frustrated. Most of the time, I'm able to steal other items during raid. To the client not giving payment was never a typical issue. However, there was hardly an even anything to look at, let alone steal in that abandoned house. So I left empty-handed, and after all that frightful work I had done to get it, all I had left were the tapes, which I decided to look at. Just an end just in case the client actually called back asking what I had obtained. What I, I was surprised to find I even still had a VHS player in my closet, because the tapes had no form of labels on them. I just put the first one in the stack of three. The first tape I played was just static for a few minutes. I was about to stop when it actually did cut to a picture. There was a date on the lower cor left corner of the screen, which was August 2nd, 2010, displayed as 8 2 10. There was a footage of a small room, which was vacant of any furniture and looked to be degraded in condition. The video appeared to be in a form of night vision, so the room must have been dark and it was lifeless. Footage under a door. Until a door closed to the camera, opened. A young woman walked through and the door shut behind her as she walked in. She started yelling, Michael! Michael, it's me! Where are you? She turned around in circles, searching for someone. There was a frantic look of worry on her face. I assumed that this Michael would be her son or other close person she was looking for. She waved her arms around the room before taking out her phone as a source of light. She walked to the end of the room and took a left at what appeared to be a stairway. The foot tag went to static a few minutes later. A few seconds later. Now I had an idea of what the footage may have been taken, but I refused to believe it at the moment of watching the tape. I didn't want to watch another second just for that reason, though for my own safety I had to know if my paranoia, paranoia was correct. 
The next tape started similar to the last, static for a few minutes, then it cut to footage. It was a footage of another empty room, but it appeared to be in the same decaying state as the last. The footage had a time and date, but it was March 14th, 2013, more than a year's difference. Someone came in from a small hallway leading into the room. This time, it was an older man. He actually had a flashlight this time and looked to the roof. He pulled down a staircase that led into the attic. This is where I flipped shit. Those red lights, those dots in the corner of the room, they were cameras and they were rolling. The abandoned house was rigged with them, more than I probably ever saw. At first, I must... I believed it must have been some sort of police setup, which I immediately checked all my windows to see if my home was surrounded. I, thankfully, found nothing. I went back to the tape, and the recording showed the man climbing the ladder into the attic. He looked... he too looked like as if he were looking for someone. Or something. But he never actually spoke. He also never shined his flashlight around the room so I, I doubt he ever noticed the camera. A few seconds later, after he was in the attic, the footage ended, and, but I did notice something. Just moments before the footage ended, the camera moved as if it was picked up in, in the last few seconds. I immediately went to the third and final tape as I wanted to know what else might be looking at me through the house. This tape was viewing the stairway. It appeared zoomed in like it was another level, but still focusing on the first second floor at the top of the stairs was the same man from the previous tape with the same date 3 14 13 since i had dropped the tapes from down the stairs when i collected them it must have been a lucky grab to grab two continuing tapes the man in the footage appeared injured this time he clutched his left arm which revealed to which revealed to have blood running from it and i looked closely enough he stumbled with each step as he progressed down the first floor. When he was just at the bottom step, he fell, probably out of exhaustion. At the top of the stairway looked some, stood something. It looked to be a person about six feet tall, but I'm not going to make any assumptions that it was human. It walked down to the man and began dragging him by his uninjured arm. The man put up a little struggle which led him to being kicked in the head by the being. It moved the man down the second staircase, uh, the one that I believe led to the form of a basement. The figure was close enough to the camera I could see its face, or at least what was covering it. It wore a mask, which looked to be an aging or aged rag with holes cut for each eye and numerous tears everywhere. The skin exposed by tears was a dark, bloodied gray, which led to me to being more content that the face was covered. The thing stared at the camera for a moment with blurred yellow eyes that made myself even more uncomfortable. It then picked up the camera, turned it around to reveal a door that led to the bottom of the staircase. The being picked the man up, opened the door, and kicked the man inside of another room which appeared to be empty. The door was quickly shut once the man went in, and then the camera just viewed the door for the next few minutes. What was disturbing here, however, were the sounds. Behind the door, there were many rapid scratching noises after the wall was being scraped. The injured man on the inside of the room began to scream, so did the other voices. The other scream sounded inhuman, more animal like this than like the scream of a person. The injured man's screams were quickly cut off after what sounded like a ripping of flesh and snapping of ligaments. At first I thought the man stopped screaming, but then I realized that all sound had been cut off from the footage. The door to the room then opened and inside there was another creature. They almost appeared human, but were very frail and gray with no hairs upon their body or anywhere. Their spines were painfully visible and protruded from their bodies in, in a natural and excessive manner. The ones near the end of the room began to climb up the walls and onto the ceiling. One of them began to turn around, but the 
footage ended in static cut before its face could be revealed. Naturally, I was terrified by this and because I had just been in the place and I had been recording been recorded in the same way. I checked my windows again and locked them. I stayed indoors for a few days keeping constant watch of it. Well, I was, well, being watched. Uh, keeping constant watch of it if I was, well, being watched. I had burned the tapes and when I was sure I hadn't left any sort of trail from my visit to the house, I began to go out again. I occasionally took another job, but none that involved abandoned houses or structure. Not much more than two weeks ago, I received a package from my front door. I say, assumed this to be a payment from a recent client, as most would pay me by simply dropping off their part. I opened it to find three VHS tapes, which appeared to be in new condition. They were each marked with a number going from one to three. I played the tape marked with the f one first. It was footage of the same abandoned house as before. And, it was a m and there was a camera in the first empty room. A few minutes passed and someone entered. It was a younger man who wore dark clothing as if he wanted to be keep hidden. It took only a second to realize this man was me. And the tapes of when I entered the house I went straight to number two. The second tape was a recording of the staircases with the camera planted near the door at the basement. I showed me stumbling out the hallway onto the stairs with the box of tapes in both hands. I took a few steps down and then I watched myself trip and fall. Except I didn't actually trip. I was pushed. The footage... A figure at the top of the stairs wearing the same rags on its head as the previous tape had since shoved me. Had slightly shoved me. It wasn't enough force to where I could have felt him behind me, but it was enough to where I lost my balance with the box in both hands. The footage showed me jump back on my feet with three tapes of hand and running off screen, which was when I ran out of the house. The mask being only ran to the bottom of the stairs staircase and watched me run it then walked slowly down the second flight of stairs and looked in the camera for a few seconds and then the footage ended you I was in more fear than when I had watched the previous tapes my paranoia of being followed became more severe it took every fiber of courage in my body to keep watching and I played the final third tape this tape wasn't from inside the abandoned house. It was being held by someone and it was being taken from outside in a different location. The camera holder walked on the road for a few minutes until focusing on the camera on a single house. The house was my house and whoever or whatever was filming let out a loud, sickening laugh. Then the tape ended. I've grown paranoid, and with good reason. I'm not huddled in the center of a room all day, but I don't go out in public much anymore. Anytime I do, I feel like I've seen a masked figure out of the corner of my eye. Perhaps it's just a fabrication of my mind, but I even sense it right next to me in some places. There will be a few days where I hear a knock on my door, only to find a single tape on my doorstep. Each night is similar to the last. It is always footage of my home, usually during the day, but others at night. And with each tape, the camera comes closer.